The Canadian team in the NBA acquires yet another Canadian. <laughs> I'm in your select with me. I've got Dave DeFore. The Utah Jazz are sending Kelly Olenek and Ochai Abaji to the Toronto Raptors for Kyra Lewis. Poor Kyra Lewis. He's just... Hope hope you're hope you're renting and not buying Kyra Lewis, uh, Otto Porter, and a 2024 first round pick, which is the Oklahoma City Thunder's first round pick, which is a pretty bad pick and a pretty <laughs> bad draft. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. About the only thing I can really configure is that Toronto really just likes to have Canadian guys. That's what that's if, my what if, my like, big analysis. I, I don't want to upset you this early in the morning, and I, I should note. Pacific time uh, trade deadline day is rough, uh, <laughs> but I don't want to upset you this early in the yeah. morning, but what if this is all about Shea Gildas Alexander? We're going to get all the Canadians, Listen. all these guys that spent the summer hanging out with Shea uh, yeah. in, in Indonesia and in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. We're going to get them all here. And we're going, this is an Olympic year. These guys are going to go, they're going to have training camp right after the season. They're going to go to yeah. Paris together. Right hey. after the season, they're gonna be spending a lot of time together. And Shake Gilgis Alexander is an MVP level player. Yeah, get all his buddies, bring them all in. Hey, bring them be, all to be clear. This what this makes way more sense than what the Toronto Raptors are trying to do to their team today. I mean, the Raptors are 18 and 33. They're they're going nowhere fast this season, and to acquire two players that have, have been at least Kelly has been like a really key contributor to what Utah has done. And Abaji has been kind of in and out of the starting lineup, kind of in and out of the lineup in general. He's had kind of a weird season. He's not really shooting it well from three. He's not really big enough to be a wing. Um, so like his, his impact has been kind of here and there, but to me, like Olenek would be like a guy that would help a lot of contending teams. Because he can pass, he can shoot. He's not a bad defender. He can move a little bit. He can play in transition. Like he's the kind of guy that I think could give teams a boost. But then when you look at him going to the Raptors, you're like, what? <laughs> like what? Why do? You, what do they? What do you want with Kelly Olynyk? Except for the fact that he's Canadian. I get it. And then like Abaji, a six foot five shooting guard that doesn't really do anything well as an NBA I I don't know I don't I think it's a it's it's fine it didn't cost them a whole lot and because I just don't think this pick is going to be worth a whole lot I mean like a late first round pick and a bad draft like fine the the deal just kind of like rings out just kind of meh to me whenever I like really take a look at it I I mean I I would be honest with you um I maybe wouldn't have done a video about this one if uh <laughs> i mean i just I, to be honest it, it's just it's a nothing to me it, it's similar to the raptors last year going out and get Jakob pertle for what yeah. you stink you stink yeah, why? Yeah, why? toronto you are not good your team is not well put together it makes no sense whatsoever um emmanuel quickly has gotten worse since he went to toronto yeah. and the whole thing was he was going to get the keys finally and be unleashed and they're just not doing a good job of it and, and part of this is I just, I, Toronto has not done a good job of getting good players since they got Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Period. True. They true. drafted Scotty Barnes. Man, great choice at number four over Jalen Suggs. I think Scotty Barnes, the guy's a star. I mean, he's going to be an all star this year. That's great. But what else has this front office done? Nothing. They traded OG Ananobi and they did it a little bit late. I think they could have gotten more for him last year. My understanding is teams were offering four firsts last year. They didn't. Mm -hmm. Fred Van Vliet walks for nothing. I mean, this is, I don't know. I I just, this is a a continuation of weird roster moves that just don't make much sense to me. So I'm with you. I think the only reasoning I can come up with is that Kelly Olenek is Canadian. (laughs) I don't, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense functional sense uh to the sport of basketball or to roster management for this team none whatsoever i mean look if they had traded for like do up wreath okay he's like 27 28 you know on the bench for for portland give him a shot that's oh great pickup yeah let's see maybe he's a player i i I happen to think he is Mm -hmm. i know who kelly olenic is and he's old he doesn't set up with your timeline in any way he's 
he, I just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. I really was, you know, in, we talked a little bit before we started recording. Olenek could help a lot of contending teams. Mm-hmm. A lot. And uh, unless the plan is to try to flip him in the next, you know, two hours, I, I, and I don't think it is. I don't think so. It either. just, he, he doesn't help a bad team. He just doesn't. Uh, although he is averaging a triple double per 48 minutes. So I just throw that out there. Maybe that's what they saw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't quite get it for the Raptors. They, 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 you know, Masai said that he wasn't going to keep all of his first round picks and he has kept, he's true to his word here, but m- maybe he likes a That would make the most sense to me is like, Hey, this is a guy who was a lottery pick not that long ago. Maybe we can bring him in and do something with him. But he also, listen, he's not six foot nine. He's not a Raptor. What's going is that on over? Here? Is that over? Um, it feels over. I mean, I watched the Raptors here in Oklahoma City on Sunday, and it feels like everything is over except for Scotty at this too point. Many, too many short guys. They got too many guys under six nine. It's Project six nine has been destroyed by Vision six ten down in oh, Orlando. Yes. That's true. That's true. It's sad. It's sad to say, but I believe that that's true. Yeah. Um, it, it, if you're Utah, you feel good about getting a first for Kelly Olynyk, and you know that's about it. Um, and that's even enough. that in yeah. a bad draft, in a bad draft, I get a late first. It, it is really like the worst contract situation you want to be in. But maybe they yeah. can just maybe there's a guy they do like in this draft. Then they're just like, you know what? It's right. worth it for us. We we've got the salary space that, that doesn't really matter that much uh, to Utah. And Danny Ainge is actually pretty good at drafting. He's so done a good job. This could uh, bad drafts are sometimes at the top end if they're bad. They're sometimes decent for role players, and you never know once these guys get into an NBA system. So there could be yeah. a, an opportunity here for Utah to turn what is ostensibly a bad pick, and it's not bad because. The guy in the late first round is all that much worse. It's about the contract of the guy who is a little bit worse. I don't know. I I tend to trust Danny Ainge in the draft room so much that I think you give him any extra tools and he's going to make something out of it. Expect like I expect him to look for a big wing, a guard, a, a guy, you know, that's his thing. He likes these big and I know they've got Colin Sexton and he's been cooking, but my guess is they're going to be looking at every big guard and wing in the draft, and they're going to bring a couple of them in and see what sticks. Uh, Agbaji wasn't able to stick there, and, and that says yeah. a lot to me. I know. That's that's a red flag if I'm the Raptors, that they were willing to include both of those guys for a first. is like, yeah. That's a little weird. It's a little weird. All right, that's enough Not on this Not saying he's trip. a bad player, but don't think he's a good one. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for listening. Uh, To this, please stay tuned. We're going to have a lot more videos for you all day long on the trade deadline and stay locked into everything at The Athletic.